Hello, good evening and welcome to News at 10 on TV3. This is coming to you live from our studio here at Adesanwe. We are streaming live on our website, 3news.com, and also on Facebook. And coming up tonight, the Accra Regional Police Command rescue a Lebanese national allegedly kidnapped by persons suspected to be Nigerians. We'll be digging deeper into that particular story and expand it further for you. The late news is also live on DSTV channel 279 and uh, on our Facebook and our website 3news.com. Do let us know what your thoughts are on our comments. Uh, send us your comments on our show this evening. In the meantime, here are the highlights and uh, I'll be just taking you through some of the key stories that are making headlines today in the country. And um, the United Nations has pledged to support efforts spearheaded by the National Peace Council aimed at uh, finding a lasting solution to political vigilantism in Ghana. The United Nations General Secretary's Special Representative for West Africa and the Sahel region, Dr. Mohamed Ibn Chambas, who made this known at a lecture in Accra, was hopeful the parties would reach a consensus. Uh, away from that, to the Ashanti region and Otiko Koso, uh, Nan Otufo, Osei Tutu II is marking his 20th anniversary and the police have announced the closure of some major roads in Kumasi ahead of the Akwesidae Kese on Sunday, which also climaxes the 20th anniversary of the celebration of the Asante Hinim. The closure is to ensure smooth traffic flow and instill security as dignitaries from Ghana and around the world are making their way to Menshia Palace for the celebration. And uh, TV3 will be covering it live and keeping, bringing you details of every detail, every program that would happen there in the Ashanti region. Elsewhere around the world, at least 13 people have died and many were injured when a wall collapsed in South Africa at the start of an Easter service at a Pentecostal church. Emergency services said that 29 people were rushed to hospital after the collapse in the coastal province of KwaZulu-Natal. And that uh, is one of the major stories uh, that has happened following today, being a holiday, being marked around the world, and uh, also being uh, people celebrating Easter. So it's a special holiday edition of News at 10, and uh, we're happy that you've made time to join us. We hope you had a good time. We're bringing you News at 10 right here, right now. Stay with us. Up next is the big one. My name is Martin Asidu Date. The details of our stories. Now, the Charlie SWAT unit of the Accra Regional Police Command has reportedly rescued a Lebanese national allegedly kidnapped by persons suspected to be Nigerians. The police had gone to a house numbered H stroke A stroke 11 B. Uh, in THC estate at Vivian Farms upon gathering some intelligence regarding uh, that uh, kidnapping. However, attempts by the police to enter the premises was met with some resistance. In the process, a 61-year-old Lebanese consular general and head of missions of Estonia to Ghana came out of one of the rooms in the house. The victim, Nabil Makram Busbu, uh, Basbu told police he went out for a walk within uh, his neighborhood in the early hours of uh, Thursday, April 18, but was kidnapped by occupants of a Hyundai Elantra private vehicle with registration number GE892217, and that was done at gunpoint. The police found the car uh, in the compound with a Rattray brand um, pistol loaded with five rounds of 765 uh, ammunition and two axes. Also, the police said they found in the house a Honda motorbike uh, with registration number M19 or GR507. Uh, it was also found in the house, and the police have taken that as part of its exhibits and things they found in the house. And they are investigating this matter. But really, this is not the first time we are hearing of issues regarding kidnapping. And then that also, uh, the fact that the suspects are mainly from Nigeria. It's always a suspicion that they are from there, and we don't have 
concrete evidence to back that. But let's speak to Adam Bona. He's the CEO of Security Warehouse and also um, a security analyst. Good evening, uh, Mr. Adam Bona, and thank you for making time to join us. In the first place, uh, how has the Good Friday been? Oh, yes. Uh, good evening to your viewers. Uh, well, it hasn't been too good. I'm sure you uh, yourself and your viewers are aware of uh, the death of uh, Major General Francis Sanziri uh, in far away in Israel. So my condolences to the wife, COP uh, Veep Sanziri. Uh, condolences to, to her. And uh, probably this other kidnapping that uh, have been reported uh, coupled with that, I would say uh, the Good Friday would have been better. This, that's what I can say. Right. Uh, yeah, truly, we also send our condolences to the family. Uh, the president has also uh, spoken on that. We'll bring that story to you and our viewers uh, subsequently. But to the particular story we called you on, which has to do with this kidnapping, uh, would you describe it as good news, at least the fact that he has been uh, rescued and the suspects that have been uh, arrested in this, uh, this, this scenario, where is Ghana heading? Should we be living in fear, you think? Yes, I think, uh, thank you very much for the question. Yeah, we should pat the police uh, in the back. I think uh, in recent days, we, we've always, you know, uh, had stories about them probably in a negative way. But this is one of the significant rescues that they have undertaken. If this hadn't if they were not that swift, and probably, uh, let's congratulate the, I call them the proper uh, SWAT team of the Ghana Police Service. This is a pro the proper SWAT team. This is what SWAT teams should be doing. This would have been probably, uh, you know, a situation that would have attained international uh, attention. And so for me, I think we should be patting them in the back. But with regards to should we be living in fear, uh, if you look at the situation at the moment, one it is difficult to tell with, you know, the influx of uh, people coming into the country unrestricted, people just trooping in because of the porous border. No one is checking them and living amongst us, and we don't know who they are and taking advantage of us. Uh, who knows? Whose turn is it going to be next time? And so I think that uh, the security agencies, uh, the immigration service, the, you know, those who are in charge of rents in this country, the Ghana Police Service, and all other, you know, uh, security sector agencies should be up their game. Mm. Because then uh, most of these kidnappings are becoming a norm among Ni some Nigerians who have found Ghana to be a safe haven to perpetuate this type of, uh, you know, act of uh, criminality. Mm. And just by way of correction, uh, we are told none of the suspects have been arrested, but at least uh, the gentleman in question who was allegedly kidnapped has been uh, uh, rescued regarding what happened yesterday. Um, can you, would you agree with those who are saying that we are continually having these problems because there seems to be a lack of intelligence sharing, especially in the sub-region? Correct. I mean, I have raised that issue. I mean, ECOWAS, this is supposed, ECOWAS should have been able to identify every national within the sub-region. So, for instance, I should have had my information with ECOWAS so that once I cross to neighboring Togo and uh, they, you know, stamp my passport or they ID me as entering Togo, uh, they flag me to say, okay, this uh, Ghanaian has traveled uh, into Togo. But there is nothing like that. And so, uh, ECOWAS isn't doing uh, what it's supposed to do. Probably the sub-regional, you know, uh, leaders, uh, for instance, our, you know, leaders here in Ghana would have to put in measures to protect us because then the way things are going, uh, we are quite peaceful. And so people are just trooping in and taking advantage of the peaceful nature of this country. And so as far as I'm concerned, the sub-region, ECOWAS is failing its nationals. And, you know, cross-border crimes is becoming uh, a norm. And so uh, do we feel safe? If you ask me, I'll say some of these incidents don't make us feel as safe as we would have expected, you know, within Ghana and probably in the sub-region. Mm. 
Mm. And this particular story uh, is of importance to us, not only because of the personality involved. This is a, someone who is a, a rep of another country, a high-profile person in that regard. But staying on the tangent of kidnapping, we'd want to link this to the, th uh, the three Takradi girls who up till date have not been found. At least the CID say they know their whereabouts, but as to why they've not been brought out or they've not been rescued and sent uh, reunited with their families, we cannot tell. But is it disturbing looking at the fact that in the last year and a half, these stories of kidnapping seem to be on the rise? Yes, it's very disturbing, I must admit. It's very disturbing, and it is also because probably our laws have not been in, enforced the way it has to be enforced. Uh, you, we very often would hear the immigration service say we are going all out on crackdown on landlords, rock landlords who rent their homes and facilities to, you know, foreigners who come here without permit, without legal, uh, you know, residence permits to stay here. They rent. It's, it's illegal to do that, uh, you know, per our immigration laws. You cannot rent your house or facility to uh, people who don't have residence permits. So go down, arrest them. And so this is worrying because then you have, uh, what do you call it, this kidnapping that took place that, I mean, I think uh, close to a year now, and mm. these girls have not been rescued. And now we are hearing more of this incident. Fortunately, the proper police SWAT team did, you know, uh, rescue them. This would have been another dent on probably the security of this country and so forth. As far as I'm concerned, we've got to wake up. With the, the security agencies would have to sit up and put in more measures and make sure that rock landlords are prosecuted. Uh, you know, uh, those who are coming in are coming in to do either business or to for tourism and go back, but they are not coming in to take advantage of our peaceful nature. Mm -hmm. And so for me, yeah. That links to my next question, actually, looking at the fact that the ECOWAS protocol says that uh, persons within the community that move to neighboring countries can stay there a maximum of 90 days. And do you think that at least the, the, the protocols part on issues of free movement of persons should be re-looked at and probably security measures heightened regarding the kinds of persons we allow into our country and the kinds of persons that leave our country into neighboring uh, countries within the community? Rightly so. I mean, the, that 90-day that uh, regime where nationals can crisscross, for me, needs to be looked at. If uh, we, it has to be reduced, reduced. If it cannot be reduced, then those who are coming in, let's put in more measures. Let's check them. Let's, uh, you know, employ more, recruit more immigration officers. Let's get them out there to do what is expected of them. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, uh, yes, 90 days you are in. But landlords should not be renting their homes to these people more than, what do you call it, 90 days. Because mm -hmm. then, you know, the, the, the act of kidnapping, there's a gang who do that. These are, this is gang related. And so they are highly connected. And so you would see three people who probably undertook this, uh, at, you know, uh, kidnapping. But then on the chain, you would have about sometimes 20 of them. Some of them are drivers. Some of them are security officers. Some of them are cooks. And, you know, some of them are negotiators who would go out there to negotiate for ransom. And so it is an international crime that needs to be cracked down. And so as far as I'm concerned, Ghana should not be a haven for kidnapping. Because if you go into the, you know, some part of Nigeria or even in Nigeria, you just can't walk freely in some areas. If you're a foreigner, you'll be arrested. But mm. back home in Ghana, it is not that way. People walk freely. And mm. so let's not allow these things to, to fester, to go on. I think it needs to be checked as soon as possible. We're grateful for your time. I mean, this is a discussion that we could go on and on about. But to thank you for uh, your time, as always, and your expertise. We've been speaking uh, to Adam Bona. He is a, a, the chief executive officer of the security warehouse and a security analyst helping us uh, understand what can be done regarding the recurrent news of kidnapping and the fact that they seem to be majority, uh, those kidnappers are from Nigeria. We'll follow this story keenly and keep you posted. This is 
TV3's News at 10. And um, we'll stay on this story, but then connect with uh, one other story, still on issues regarding the United Nations. And uh, uh, meanwhile, the UN senior mediator, uh, mediation advisor in the Central Republic and former Deputy Foreign Affairs Minister, uh, Emmanuel Bombande, has observed legislation cannot be the optimal solution to ending political party vigilantism in the country. He spoke to TV3's Selam Amenya on the sidelines of a public lecture in Accra. The Attorney General, Gloria Kufu, on Thursday, April 11, presented before Parliament a new bill seeking to criminalize and disband all forms of political vigilantism in the country. This was after the President had asked the political parties to meet, but they failed to do so. The AG is asking the parliamentarians to, under a certificate of urgency, approve the Vigilantism and Related Offences Bill 2019 that the government intends to use to end acts of violence perpetrated under the guise of vigilantism by the United Nations Senior Mediation Advisor in the Central African Republic insists the legislation alone is not enough. Let's be very clear. Every legislation equally demands that when the bill is passed and the president assents to it, it will call for enforcement. The legislative processes to ban vigilantism in themselves will be as weak as the political will to enforce them. Otherwise, you are trying to solve a problem by creating new problems. Because when the bill is assented to and it is not enforceable, it now becomes a new problem in addition to the fact that we have the vigilantism. He however indicated the decision of asking the two major political parties to meet to fashion out how to disband the vigilante groups was a wrong move, adding this calls for a broader consultation. Dialogue to ban vigilantism, in my view, is a very first attempt. But its weakness is the assumption that the New Patriotic Party and the National Democratic Congress can meet and out of that would come a, a, a resolution. Let's not kid ourselves. The best alternative is the dialogue process, but it must be inclusive. This is News at 10 on TV3. We'll be back shortly with more. Stay with us. Welcome back to News at 10 on TV3. The 37th branch of the Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, is accusing the La District Police of harassment and extortion. The drivers claim the La Police MTTD arrest and extort monies from them due to the absence of a bus stop around the trade fair site. But the La Police denies the claims and is blaming the drivers of converting unapproved areas into lorry parks. Here's a report by Peter Kwao Adato. The Ghana Private Road Transport Union, GPRTU, alleged there were about five bus stops between Palmwine Junction and T Junction. Unfortunately, these were eliminated in the re-engineering of the hitherto one-lane giraffe road into a dual carriage. The absence of the designated bus stops has created inconvenience for both passengers and drivers, leading to sometimes heated arguments. As a result, the drivers say they were compelled to stop at various bus stops, which have been eliminated from the engineering, to alight and pick passengers. And this is where their all started. The drivers say the La Police take advantage of the no stopping signs to arrest and extort money from them on daily basis. If somebody bought your car, you have to stop for the person. You can't take the person away. And then if you stop there, police arrest you that there's no parking there. Maybe if you are lucky, they get some tea from you and then leave you. Two drivers testified about their experience in March. They claimed the police escorted them to the office in La Town because they had refused to give in to their demands initially, an action the drivers regretted. Isaac Hernandez told us they were forced to pay 1,200 to 1,500 times before their vehicle was released. <laughs> The police 
Two million ago, uh, last one, 1.5, 1.5. It's about the police for the SS, Jumano. For my papa, my Jansha, traffic light in the call, but I knew the movie actually in the car, and I saw my car, but I saw my car, and I saw my car, and I saw my car. These claims were endorsed by the 37th branch welfare chairman of the GPRTU, Kwe Kufi Mpong. There's no bus stop around those who arrest them. And if you arrest them, no, they collect money from them. And we went to the uh, LADMA, to the authorities to report them that they should do something about it. And they said, okay, they will do this about one year now. They didn't do anything. Kweku Frimpong also pleaded with the police to help them persuade the urban road and the LAD municipal assembly to provide bus stops along the stretch. A drive through the stretch confirmed the absence of bus stops. Ironically, the opposite side of the road from T Junction towards Bemakamp has bus stops. The La District MTTD Commander of Police, ASP Ni Otukwe, admitted the anomaly in the engineering but refuted the extortion allegations. ASP Ni Otukwe challenged those who claimed to have paid money to the police to come forward to identify those officers. The issue of extortion, I don't know anything about it. Uh, so if they have uh, enough evidence to prove that this policeman or the other is the one involved, then if it comes to our notice, we'll take action. ASP Kwe again told the news team their outfit is liaising with the La Municipal Assembly to create bus stops along the stretch, but admonished the drivers against turning bus stops into lorry parks. Now, three persons have been arrested for selling prepaid electricity meters to consumers in Kumasi. The suspects are currently in police custody. The arrest followed a tip-off that some individuals were selling meters embossed with logos of the Electricity Company of Ghana in parts of Kumasi. The suspects were named as Tampoli Bakun, Paul Asori, and Aisha Abubakar. A fourth suspect, Ms. Bao Abubakar, is on the run. Ashanti Regional Public Relations Manager of the Power Distribution Services, Erasmus Chre Beidu, explained how the three were nabbed. The, the first uh, person who was arrested happened to be someone who has been selling meters. When we got information, our prosecution unit feigned interest and uh, got ready to buy one. So they managed to arrange and got this guy who has been selling the meters to come up. So when he came and uh, they paid for it, they took the, the, the meter and caused his arrest. He said the PDS is currently battling with a 15% revenue loss. If we're able to reduce commercial losses, I mean, the whole country, everybody will be happy because the monies will go back to the producers. In other news tonight, President Akufuado has expressed his condolence to the family of Major General Francis Vip Sanziri, who died earlier today in Israel. Major Vip Sanziri, until his death, was the Ghanaian head of mission and force commander of the United Nations Disengagement Observer Force. Now, the president said Ghana has lost a fine, dedicated, professional mil uh, military officer who served his country and the global community with distinction. President Akufuado expressed his heartfelt condolence to his widow wife, his widow, COP Beatrice Vip Sanziri, to his children, to the Ministry of Defense, the Chief of Defense Staff, Chief of Army Staff, officers, men and women of the Ghana Armed Forces, and to the United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres and members of UN DOF. He further described Mr. Vip Sanziri as an officer with a distinguished military career. May his soul rest in perfect peace. And also, the, uh, he used to be the former head of NADMO, and so NADMO has also re uh, released a statement, uh, you know, commiserating with his family and also wishing him um, to rest in peace. That's it for the bulletin. It came your way from our studio here at Adesawe. My name is Martin Sidu Dati. Do have a good evening as always. Stay positive and enjoy the rest of the weekend. Bye for now.